Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. We take you back to our leading story. Former President Jacob Zuma briefed the media for the first time today since the end of his prison term earlier this month. He made utterances on President Cyril Ramaphosa saying he is corrupt. Zuma has also raised concerns about Chief Justice Raymond Zondo alleging that he turned the State Capture Commission into an agency for tyranny. The former president says he's bothered by the media's complete silence over the alleged theft of hard cash at Ramaphosa's Limbopo farm. He adds that Ramaphosa should not be doing private business while in state office. Let's uh, unpack this further. Zuma's media uh, briefing with uh, um, Zwane Lemanyi, who speaks for the Jacob Zuma Foundation. Very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us in studio. Greetings, Mpo, and greetings to your viewers. It was a lengthy press briefing. Um, I mean, a lot of attacks, the media... President Ramaphosa, the judiciary. In fact, we perhaps should have expected something because we know that the former president outside the Peter Maritzburg High Court said he will speak further. What was the purpose of, of this briefing today? Yeah, just start by saying uh, for the first time that President speaks out of incarceration, then we get this good reign. So that on its own it should tell you that the man is walking around with blessings. You know, rain is something very fundamental for us as Africans. Yeah. So indeed, uh, this was a blessed day. Uh, I think heavens are happy that uh, their son is out. Their son is now a free man. So the purpose of today was for President Zuma to do a few things. Uh, firstly, just to, because he had some time to reflect on what has happened. And he gave us some reflections on of, uh, a whole range of things. Yeah. Of, in fact, some of it was very uh, sad, actually that uh, for them that uh, had gone to exile, for them that had gone to all this suffering uh, to try and get a better South Africa, only to wake up into a democratic South Africa that uh, in, some is, in some aspect is almost like Western apartheid, uh, as it were. Uh, I mean, if you look at the situation that uh, he was relating, where a person in the democratic South Africa is refused the right to trial, is, is refused the right to... Uh, to, to, to uh, appeal sentence, is refused a right to mitigate the length of the sentence, uh, is, is, is refused a right to even plead guilty or innocent, all of those things. Uh, you would not think that such a thing would happen uh, in South Africa. So I was lamenting uh, that kind of a thing that uh, this is a bad South Africa that we are into, uh, where judges, uh, uh, instead of uh, helping to interpret the law in a manner that is consistent with the will of the people of South Africa, but it looks like there are now politicians, they are busy uh, uh, doing all kinds of uh, battles uh, to target certain people, mm -hmm. uh, as it were. Yeah, so I think uh, he was lamenting that, and also was lamenting the fact that South Africa, uh, during his era, uh, they held him on a short leash uh, on simple things uh, that uh, he was accused of, where even today, there's hardly any evidence of the things that was accused of, but they were on his case uh, in this country. Yet we've got a, a pala pala situation here where it's not who said, I said, it's concrete stuff. Millions uh, of, of dollars uh, were, were, were found in this place, were stolen in this place, and uh, the, the person that uh, where they were stolen from is no less than the whole president of the country. So in other words, criminals must say they are in good company in this country if you are going to have a head of state that is going to be alleged to have flouted things like foreign currency, that would be alleged to have flouted, uh, would have been part of tax evasion, because if you keep money at home, uh, it's got an immediate implication that you're paying tax on that money, uh, as it were. So indeed, uh, criminals must be saying, uh, this is paradise because the head of state is, is one of us. Uh, how can you have a head of state that is uh, involved? I mean, if, if, you've, if you've seen that uh, a, a charge sheet by uh, affidavit of uh, Arthur Fraser, mm -hmm. I mean, there are things there like kidnapping. Can you believe it? Head of state implicated in things like kidnapping. But There's it hasn't of gone to, to, to the court of law. I mean, I looking at uh, whether or not this has gone to gone through the processes in court and to use the word corrupt without alleged in front of it. But as an elder, no, let's deal with that. one, <coughs> one would no, have no, expected... Let's deal, okay. with that, let's deal with that. What is your high level understanding or definition of corruption? It has to be that is to abuse your position of authority for personal gain. Now we have a situation where you have the head of state 
that is being investigated by the public protector and it decides to dismiss or rather to suspend that public protector, that is corruption because what you're actually doing now, you're abusing your position for your personal benefit. You're saying this one is bringing heat on me, let me suspend him with the power I have. Mm -hmm. That is corruption. So indeed, uh, uh, there's no need to, to even have, if you, have, if you are a head of state, uh, you are a head of state, you put the buckler in your farm. You take some of your government paid employees to say, go and check out what's happening there and come and report back to me. Mm -hmm. Instead of reporting them, you are abusing your power, you are abusing state resources. This is even before we talk about the grabbers that were alleged to have been used uh, in, that, uh, in that case. This is somebody that is doing everything to abuse the, uh, the, the state apparatus of personal benefit. That is corruption. Looking at um, the former president's timing and the current political landscape, I mean, one can say that uh, it's, uh, it's spot on and well strategized looking at uh, former president Jacob Zuma. This is the time that President Ramaphosa now needs to apply his mind on the state capture recommendations, um, you know, and bring out a plan of action. And we know, we know very well that uh, Zuma is part of those who have serious issues when it comes with the report and doesn't want to see those recommendations being implemented. Well, let's go to that report itself. You must t tell me, uh, we had Brian there, we had Google there that uh, said all kinds of things about Ramaphosa uh, in that, in that uh, state capture submissions. Why is it that uh, Justice Zondo decided to gloss over that issue and do absolutely nothing about that. When Glencoe was arguing with Cole Price with, uh, with Brian at ESCOM, guess who was uh, the, the, the chairperson of the, of the war room? Who at the time of being the chairperson of the war room was also a director at, uh, at Glencoe? None other than uh, your president. And all of that conflict uh, that was there, Zondo decided to brush it over. So you can't tell me about the Zondo report as if you're talking about a credible document. That document is a work of a factional uh, 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 approach. Uh, it's all the people that were uh, uh, on the call it that were sympathetic to President Zuma mm -hmm. that are being targeted. All the ones, including Ramaphosa himself, that are on the Ramaphosa faction, there's all kinds of uh, tiptoeing uh, around them. There's no serious recommendations around them. Okay. But on the, on the other side, so, so that work is not something that uh, when we talk about the work that has got credibility, it's not on the documents that can be cited. The people that were doing that work there were very factional, including uh, Justice Zondo himself. So this anger and uh, frustration mainly against Ramaphosa and Chief Justice Zondo is, is something that we saw very strongly coming out of the former president. One would have expected that after being incarcerated and an elder of the ANC, he would have come out with a more... Um, you know, sentiments around unity and reconciliation uh, around the organization and its current state of affairs. You mean he should have, he should have thanked the system for abusing him. Uh, uh, I mean, what the point President Zuma makes in his submission is that for the kind of thing he's been accused of, uh, uh, of, of in contempt uh, issue, for that, for, for in contempt of the commission, uh, for the kind of thing he's been accused of, the sentence in terms of the law, he quoted the section of the law, he should have been incarcerated or fined, but the, the amount of incarceration for that kind of a crime is uh, six months. But with him, they introduced a Zuma law, something that is not written in any textbook, in anything, and they throw him uh, to, uh, to jail for uh, uh, 15 months. So why would you come back and say you are, reco you are, you are reconciling the in a democratic South Africa instead of this, this current government uh, displaying that they're better than apartheid, they're doing things that uh, make sense, they're doing things that are lawful. Instead, they abuse law. I mean, Kampempe himself, herself, she's on record saying uh, this, uh, this is an extraordinary uh, case. Uh, normal procedures won't apply, won't, won't apply. So in other words, what is normal procedure? Normal procedure is a proper trial where a person goes to high court or magistrate court or high court, and from there appeals court at, in Plumfontein at the SCA and then eventually at the, uh, at the uh, Concord. But uh, Kampempe decides that, no, waste of time. We have to deal with this man. We're going to put all of these things aside. You know, I mean, where do you get that?
Okay, so, 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 so just so, just looking, yes. uh, Mr. Manye, at uh, the former president and the timing of the briefing, and I mean, conference is is around the corner, less than a month and a half away, I think, if I'm cr timing it correctly. Was this also perhaps a stepping stone to try and influence conference? Because with this very strong sentiment around uh, former uh, President Ramaphosa, um, and we know that President Ramaphosa is seeking a, trying to seeking a second term got some support from a number of branches. Could this also be a, a stepping stone to... Which um, branches? I'm not sure which branches. Some branches have no. said that they I've, are... I've, I've heard PECs, not branches. must yes. understand the difference. Some PECs have pronounced, and yet the conference of the ANC is a conference of branches, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's not a conference of PECs. For all these PECs that have pronounced, uh, I don't know where they get their mandate. Even the constitution of the ANC does not allow that. That is a conference of branches. I'm not sure why they keep, I know Limpopo keeps uh, pronouncing and a couple of others. It's PECs. That it's not even their mandate uh, to do this. Now, President Zuma, 7th of October, when he got out of jail, it's not, he was, it was not his determination. It was determined by Zondo and his, uh, and his crowd. So for him to be out now is the work, you know, evil work usually has got uh, uh, negative consequences. Mm -hmm. The fact that this thing is coalescing into this uh, thing is payback time for all the evil deeds. Indeed, this is the time that the Mokposa needs this kind of attention less, but he's going to get it now, and the focus is on him, because also in Parliament there's a Section 89 impeachment process uh, for him uh, on all the uh, uh, pala shenanigans. So indeed, it's going to be a very uh, long October for him, a very long November for him. Uh, I mean, if you look today, uh, in this past today, between t today and yesterday, all three former presidents of this country uh, were talking about him and, 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 and are very painful. These are the people that love their own organization, the ANC. They are saying this organization is going to be bleeding. One man, I mean, if this man, if this man, I mean, you are saying it's, it's a wrong timing. If this man loved the ANC, by the way, he should have moved aside because all of this is dragging the name of the ANC down. It means the ANC is corrupt at the highest level. How can you have a head of, sta head of state, a head of the ANC mm -hmm. uh, that is mired in such controversy but hasn't got the presence of the mind to say, in the interest of maintaining the integrity of my organization, I better move out. No, he'd rather die and kill the brand. I mean, really. Very well. Let's uh, leave it there for now. Um, Zwane Lemanyi, spokesperson of the Jacob Zuma Foundation, speaking on the back of uh, some of the uh, attacks that were launched against the president, judiciary, and some um, me members of the media, of course, uh, that uh, briefing coming out today from former president Jacob Zuma. In